This is the last video from Chapter 8, and this is going through Section 8.8, which was all about improper integrals. And so we were kind of combining what we did in 8.7 with limits with what we did earlier in the chapter with integration. So I found this problem in an AP practice book. It is a BC question because improper integrals is a BC topic. But what I liked about it is it allowed me to review a lot of things in, at one time. The actual question was a multiple choice question, and it was worded that he, here you have the following improper integrals. Determine which, if any, are converging improper integrals. So it was a very time-consuming question. You'll see as we go through it, you had to go through each one, A through D, and determine if any of them converged or if none of them converged. So I like the question, though, because it's a great review question. Maybe not the difficulty you would ever see on an actual test question for me, but it takes you through a lot of problems at once. So the first thing we want to talk about is what makes an integral improper. And I'm going to use these that you're looking at as the way to explain it. I integrals can be improper for one of two reasons. Either you have a boundary that is infinite. So those are the most obvious to see. You have infinity as your upper bound, you have negative infinity as your lower bound, or on a very rare occasion you have both infin infinite boundaries. The second way is a little more subtle. The way that an improper integral, um, way an integral can be improper is if your boundaries or a number between your boundaries creates a discontinuity in the function that you're trying to integrate. And the reason that's an issue is if you think about integration representing area, if there's an asymptote either on the end or in the middle of your integral, you're not going to be able to find an area representation. So I want to look at each of these very quickly and just say, is, why is it improper? I know it is, but what's the reasoning? So if you look at letter A, the issue with A is the lower boundary. We can't plug negative 1 directly into the function I'm trying to integrate because I get a 0 in the denominator. B might be even more obvious. We have infinity as the upper boundary. Now you might be looking at this go, well, isn't 0 a problem as well? Because if you look at the bottom, there's an x in the bottom. But if you notice, my lower boundary starts at 1. So we don't have that issue. We just have the infinite boundary issue. For letter C, it's the same as B. We have an infinity as my upper boundary. And then for letter D, the issue is we have the upper boundary that cannot be plugged in directly because it gives us a 0 in the denominator. Now that we've looked at that, I'm going to go through each problem separately. They take a little bit of time and space, so I'm going to do them each on their own slide and talk about how we actually go through and evaluate them to determine if it's converging or diverging. Now, converging means that after you go through the process of evaluating, you get a finite number, any finite number. It can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero. Diverging means when you finish the process of evaluating, you get an infinite value, whether it's positive or negative infinity. So when you're finished with these, not only are you going to write the answer you get, you're also going to write next to it either converging or diverging. So for this one, the issue is the lower boundary. So the way we fix that issue is we're going to take the limit as we approach negative 1 from the right. Essentially what I'm saying is I can't put negative 1 in, but I can start out a little bit bigger than negative 1. So I'm going to go from A to 1, and you can use any letter. I used A, you could use B, C, whatever letter you would like. Next, you have to figure out how to integrate. And every single improper integral will be a pretty easy integration form. It's not going to be something complex from earlier in this chapter. It's going to, you should look for things like power rules, u sub, inverse trig, basic integrals that you can do. So this one is a u sub, very quick u sub. u is x plus 1, du is dx, so it has no adjusting. It's a u to the negative 2. So when I integrate, I get u to the negative 1 over negative 1. So I get negative 1 over x plus 1 is my integral going from a to 1. Next step is to put your boundaries in, top minus bottom. So I get negative 1 over 1 plus 1, minus a minus, so plus 1 over a plus 1. One of the pieces should be a constant, so deal with that one first. So this one is going to be negative a half. This one, we want to see what happens when now when we take the limit. So I want to see what happens as I approach negative 1. I can't plug negative 1 in directly because it makes 0 on the bottom. So here's where I have to think about it being a one-sided limit. Instead of plugging negative 1 in, I'm going to plug a number that's a little bit bigger than negative 1, like negative 0.99. When I do that and I add 1 to it, I'm going to get a very small positive number. So I have 1 divided by a number that keeps getting smaller and smaller and remains positive. When that happens, you end up getting an infinite value. You do have a negative a half in front, but it's not going to make a difference because anytime I add a constant to infinity, infinity always wins. So we get infinity as my answer, and the way I describe it is I would say this is a diverging improper integral. So that's not the right answer. So moving to p letter B, B has the issue being infinity as the upper boundary. So the way we correct this is we take the limit as we approach infinity. And again, you can use any letter you want. So I chose B. I need to figure out how to integrate this. This is going to be easier than the last one. It is not a u sub. It is just a basic power rule. So I have x to the negative a half. When I do power 1 greater divided by that power, I get 2x to the half. 
So I have 2x to the half, or you could write 2 square root of x going from 1 to b. Put my boundaries in, so I get 2b to the half minus 2 times 1 to the half. This part's just going to be minus 2. Now I want to see what happens as we go to infinity. So what happens as we go to infinity? If I take the square root of a number that keeps getting larger and larger, it keeps getting larger and larger. So this piece will be infinity. Does not matter that I'm subtracting 2 off of it. I still get infinity. So this one, like the last one, is a diverging improper integral and still not the answer that we're looking for on this multiple choice question. Letter C has the same issue as letter B. So I'm going to start it the exact same way. I want to look as B goes to infinity or any letter that you choose from 0 to b. This one has a little bit different integral form. It is not a power rule, nor is it a u sub. This is an inverse trig. This is arc tangent. And it is one that has shown up a lot in this chapter, so you should be pretty familiar with it. Going from 0 to b. So I'm going to have the arc tangent of b minus the arc tangent of 0. The inverse tangent of 0 is 0. As far as the inverse tangent, what it looks like to infinity, we discussed this in class, and there is one visual that you should be able, you don't have to draw a picture of it, but you should be able to kind of recreate in your head. This is what the inverse tangent graph looks like. You could graph it on your calculator, but you might want to change your window a little bit. You can see that it does go through 0, 0, so arc tangent of 0, 0. It does, on the ends, flatten out. The end behavior, as we go in the positive direction, it flattens out to positive pi over 2. As we go in the negative direction, it flattens out to negative pi over 2. So for this particular problem, since it wants to know the limit as we go to the positive infinity, I get pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus 0 is pi over 2, and we have finally found our converging improper integral. Now, when I was doing this multiple choice question to practice, I still did part D, partly for the practice, but also to make sure I hadn't messed up earlier. So let's take a look at D, because it's a little bit different than the last couple. The issue with D is the upper boundary. We can't plug that in. So the way that I fix that is I'm going to look at the limit as we approach 2 from the left. So I can't put 2 in, but I can get really close to 2. And then I have from 1 to B of my integral. This integral is very similar to the first one. It is a U sub. U is 2 minus X du is negative 1, so I have a negative adjustment. It's a u to the negative 3, so I get u to the negative 2 over negative 2. My negatives cancel. So my integral ends up being 1 over 2 times 2 minus, u, minus x squared, going from 1 to b. Put my boundaries in, so 1 over 2 times 2 minus b squared minus 1 over 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. Again, I'll do the constant piece first. This is going to end up being minus a half. Here, when I take my limit and I see what happens when I plug 2 in, I can't plug it in directly, so I want to look at the one-sided limit. I'm looking as we approach 2 from the left, so that means I want to look at a number a little bit less than 2. So if I come here and put a number in like 1.99, and I take 2 minus that number, I'm going to get a very small number. When I square that very small number, it's still small. When I multiply by 2, it's still small. So no matter what's done, my denominator continues to get smaller and smaller, positive number. As we've seen many times, that means we get an infinite value. Minus a half is still infinity. And this one, like the first two, is a diverging improper integral. As you can see, this was a very time-consuming multiple choice question, but it's a perfect question to use as a review for when you're getting ready to take a test on this because it shows you a lot of different forms, a lot of different ways that we can integrate, and how we recognize something's improper, and then how we determine if it's a converging or diverging improper integral when it's all done. You really should focus your energy on the improper integrals that have infinity as the upper boundary. I'm not going to give you one that has infinity as both the top boundary and negative infinity as the bottom boundary. So if you focus your attention on those types, you'll get B very comfortable when you take your chapter 8 test.